Hello, everyone, and welcome to the fourth episode in my Materialized CSS mini series. Now, in this video, we are going to be covering navbar using Materialized. Um, now, uh, if you've watched previous videos uh, just on my channel in general, you will find that um, navbars are generally implemented using Flexbox layouts. And um, one of the interesting things about Materialize I found is it's actually not implemented using a Flexbox. Um, and it's implemented using like um, just uh, some interesting positioning tactics using CSS. And um, <clears throat> I wanted to kind of highlight that in order to also state that, um, you know, Materialize, I think, is a great framework that uh, has many benefits, and it was the first framework I learned. Um, and I still recommend its use in certain situations and spe for specific components of the library. Um, but Navbar is one of those components that uh, I've used a lot in the past, and nowadays I'm finding that I'm augmenting it uh, I'm basically taking it and using it for its skeleton, but I'm also adding more onto it uh, purely because of its shortcomings. Um, and I think that one of the most important takeaways that you should get uh, using Materialize in general is I would highly recommend you understand the CSS that underlies the way Materialize operates. And um, really one of the good ways to do that is if you come here onto a Materialize, uh, onto the site or onto your own website that you make using Materialize, um, and obviously they use their own framework to build this site, you can go ahead and inspect the element. And for example, you'll see here, this div has a class of nav wrapper, which is what they tell you to add. Um, and you can actually inspect, see, uh, when it says nav, nav, wrap, nav wrapper, it's giving it a text line center, um, and it's giving it a position relative and a height 100. So um, just looking at that, I know uh, that they're not using a flex because there is no display flex here. Um, and again, just understanding how flexbox works, how floats work, uh, how positioning, display, you know, all of those important CSS properties work is pretty important in general. Um, and especially when you're using Materialize because there are uh, a bunch of little quirks in this library that can arise, uh, such as sometimes the uh, before I ran into an issue where the nav bar was like taking up more vertical space than it should instead of just being like this simple nav bar. And, you know, that ended up causing a lot of like uh, trouble. And if I had only understood the uh, concepts behind floats, uh, flexbox, and positioning display in CSS, I would have been able to fix that very easily. But instead, I think it took me several days when I was first learning how to code in CSS and HTML. So, you know, just, uh, you know, again, a really, really important thing is to know the underlying CSS, uh, especially when using Materialize, and really just know it whenever you're using any CSS framework, because um, at the end of the day, a lot of these frameworks aren't going to be able to provide 100% of what you need, and you will need to augment them, aka add more styles, um, except Tailwind, usually. But um, for a lot of them, you'll need to add extra stylings, um, and it's really, really hard to work with the library if you don't even know what the library itself is doing to these elements to make them look the way they are. So that's just a little thing. Like um, I'm going to go over nav bars in Materialize, but... Um, we're actually going to add, we're going to make the navbar a flex display even though it isn't by default, and it will not affect the default functionality of materialized navbar at all, which is great because materialized navbar offers a bunch of great things like this uh, little shadow, and then they add like highlights, um, highlights under your links, uh, or you know, you know, when you hover over the link and stuff like that, just a bunch of useful things. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, so we're going to open up our index.html from the previous episode, and I'm going to hit go live here. And then, um, as you can see, this is where we left off in the previous episode. Um, we had this high, small, high, medium, high, large with this really long um, string here, kind of uh, illustrating <clears throat> the different kind of responsive uh, hiding classes. This was part of the utility classes slash helper classes video. And then in addition, we had this hoverable thing and then browser default. So, you know, basically there's all these utility classes that help uh, either augment, materialize, or even just undo some of, it, of what it does. So, you know, good to check that out if you're not aware. But I'm going to go ahead and remove that just so we don't get confused. And we start with a clean slate. Now, to get started with the navbar, I will use my uh, normal kind of workflow here. Create a header inside it, create a nav inside it. 
um, using materialize, we actually want to make a div. Um, in fact, we want to make a div with a class of nav wrapper, like uh, like so. Uh, and then we want to put the UL inside of that, and then of course the LIs in here. And um, actually, inside the LIs, we will put some A's anchors, aka links. Um, we'll give them all href of. Uh, for now, we'll just give it a a pound symbol, which means don't go anywhere, pretty much. Or usually, it means go to the top of the page. But um, we'll just say link. So as you can see here, just by uh, setting up our little navbar here, we, we get this. And look, there's four little links. Each of them, uh, when you hover over it, it darkens a little bit. And basically, you can click on it. Now, that is pretty cool overall. Um, and there are a couple different customizations I'm going to show you that um, allow us to make it even better looking. So actually, in this video, since I am planning to add um, some external or some custom styles, I'm going to just create a link to our style sheet. We'll just call it style.css, and I will create that in here. Um, OK, so let's go ahead and review here. Uh, I want to show you brand logo pretty much first, although I already showed you this. Um, you come here to the nav bar uh, sub like documentation page on the materialized CSS framework. And if you scroll down here, you can see uh, you can see the brand logo being used here, here, and here. Um, and they kind of leave it up to you to dis to figure out how to use it, but you basically create an anchor tag that's not inside the UL. So you see, there's this nav wrapper here, um, and then you create another anchor or you know link tag, and again href, and you give it a class of brand logo, and you and you you know put whatever you want inside, and then that logo gets created here. Now, um, one thing that they they talk about is moving the logo around. By default, it's in the center, but actually, what you can do is you can um, move the logo around with, uh, for example, if you want to float the logo left. Um, and we are going to use the quick floats here just because um, they they are basically how Materialize intended you to use them. So this will float them right, the links, this will float the links left. Um, and again, this is using the default Materialize behavior. Um, in the previous episode, though, I actually talked about floats being kind of outdated with CSS, um, specifically because you can't uh, receive the certain level of specificity and a certain level of control when you're using floats. So what I'm going to do really quick is I'm actually going to convert this uh, navbar into a flexbox layout uh, while preserving all of the features that Materialize gives us. So here in our style.css, I'm going to go ahead and select that nav wrapper um, kind of class, and that uh, is the div that's kind of um, more or less containing all of our um, all of our items here. And what I can do is I can simply give that a display of flex. And when I do that, notice uh, you know it changes a bit. We get this uh, little broken display. But if I get rid of these floats, the left and right, um, then we, we're sort of back in business here uh, because it's not all cluttered anymore. And what we can actually do here is here in our um, A, our brand logo, we can say, um, left. Uh, yeah, we can put a, or actually, we don't even have to put a left. We, we can specify that in the CSS. And here on the uh, UL class, we can give it a right, uh, right. Um, I guess we can say, um, I'm trying to think of a good uh, class name here. I could say align right, just so I can, um, just so I don't, get in the way of the materialized classes that are already created. So let's go ahead and create an align dash right. Um, and what we can do here is say we want margin left to be auto, which is, remember, if you recall, uh, that's how we can position things using Flexbox uh, to push over to the next side, to the other side. And then um, naturally, we can actually give our flex uh, direction, or we can do our justify content to be flex start, which will uh, should move over our logo. But let's go ahead and inspect since it's not behaving as we think it should. So let's go ahead and take a look here. Let's figure out why is the logo not moving left. Um, got our header, nav, div. Okay, so we have our brand logo here. Um, I'm trying to figure out why is it not moving left. So I guess that's why. Um, the default styling is making the left equal to 50. 
um, which is what 50%, which is basically centering the logo itself. And of course, naturally, we can override that styling. So we can say dot nav wrapper and then brand logo, which is uh, basically we're saying a brand logo. If I hover over, you'll see element with a brand logo. That's a child of the nav wrapper. And you can see here we have our nav wrapper and then we have the brand logo as a child. So now we can say uh, left is zero per, or just zero. And that will uh, fix that little issue there. Although, um, I'm trying to figure out because I actually, this is not quite the right solution. Let's open this up, figure out what's going on. So we have the A class brand logo and it should have a display of block. Flex start is being justified for the nav wrapper. Display flex, justify content, flex start. Huh. That is odd. Um, okay, so I'm going to go ahead and cut here and figure out what is going wrong, and then I will be back once I figure out the solution to this. Okay, I'm back now. Um, yeah, I, I was missing this little box here. I was so confused. Uh, basically, what, what's happening here is the materialized CSS framework is basically transform, um, is applying a transform to the brand logo, which is moving it back. Um, it's moving its X backwards, which is why we see that uh, half of the logo is kind of cut off here. So what I can do is I can simply uh, set the transform translate x zero uh, if I wanted to, and that should fix that issue there. Perfect. So um, and for completeness, if we did want to um, also add the WebKit transform, since that's what they're using, um, they're using a WebKit transform translate x, and then I can put a zero there as well, and that will you know complete it for uh, browsers that don't support transform. So uh, basically, that's that was the issue. Um, now we have a fully working flex uh, kind of nav bar working here, and basically this offers us a couple of advantages in that we can more finely control how this is going to shape out in the future. Although, as you can see, the hover little thing with the links is still working. The logo, you can click on all these things. It's working as normal. They still have the drop shadow. So this was just adding a little bit of CSS to kind of um, regain control over the parts that we want to gain control over for this nav bar. So I'm going to go ahead and, and check off some of the items that we've covered. Um, and then there are now, uh, we'll, we can go over some of these utility classes that are offered. Um, so we'll start off with active, and I'll scroll down here. It's under active items in the documentation. And the gist of uh, adding active is you add the active class to any given um, li item inside our nav bar. So I'll show you what that does here. Let's go ahead and uh, maybe make link uh, active. I'll change the name here, and I'll give this a class of active. And naturally, if you open here, notice now that the link with the link active is already kind of uh, highlighted, as you can see. And basically, uh, what this is usually for is, um, for example, if you have a four-page uh, website and you're on this current page, you might want it already to be um, more or less like highlighted so that you kind of know as the user that you are already on this page. So that's kind of the use for that. And it's just a simple class that you can add here. And again, if you do not want to use this class, naturally, you can add your own styling, your own conditions. Uh, if you wanted to make it more dynamic using JavaScript, you could set up a solution using CSS variables. Um, you know, really in programming, in web design, in computer science, software engineering in general, there are a million different ways to solve the same problem. And it's really up to you because this solution here has pros and cons. It, pros, it's very, very fast to implement. You just type in class active. Cons, it's a little bit more rigid than if you were to use a dynamic solution using JavaScript and CSS variables, or if you're using a framework like React, then um, you know with a little bit more time and effort, you can make this a better kind of code solution. But uh, if you're just rapidly prototyping, you can use this class, of course. So I'll remove that for now. And the next topic is extended navbar. Now, extended navbar is pretty interesting because you can actually make it so that uh, under your navbar, you have this little kind of tabs system here that has this cool animation um, that basically, if you, you can see here, this text is changing as we click the different buttons. We can use this kind of whole uh, class system here using a, a nav extended, and then you put the nav wrapper. And then you put the actual um, the actual nav 
kind of uh, the, the nav itself in here, and then you put your nav content. Um, and actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to defer this uh, little piece uh, um, until a future video because this has the side nav implementation in it, and that's this whole little three buttons here, this three hamburger layout. Um, and I will be covering that in a future video. It is pretty useful. It allows us to basically add nav functionality when the screen is too small to display the full kind of um, tab system here. Like if, if the screen gets too small, like right here, right where it's kind of overlapping, we want it to turn into a nav bar where these links disappear and they turn into this little hamburger icon that you can click and it brings up a side nav. Um, so again, I will defer that for that video. Um, and then the active, we already went over that. And then finally, there's the fixed nav bar, which I think is pretty cool. And to fully uh, kind of demonstrate it, I'm going to add a style to our body, <clears throat> which actually is going to give our body a height of 400 VH. And if you're not familiar with VH means, it means viewport height. And basically, um, 1 VH is 1% of the height of the kind of browser. So 400 VH is 400% of the height of the browser, meaning now that I open this, I can actually scroll. And it's just a bunch of white, of course, because uh, we haven't implemented anything. But the point of having a fixed navbar is a navbar that basically follows you even as you scroll down. Because you can see here, the navbar disappears as I start to scroll. But <clears throat> if I simply um, add the navbar fixed class on a wrapper around the nav itself, which would be here our header, we could give it a class of navbar fixed. And as you can see now, um, as I scroll, you can see here on the right side I'm scrolling, the navbar will remain kind of here <clears throat> with, uh, with our, you know, with, with a user who is scrolling. Now, um, again, with some JavaScript modification, this can be made even um, cooler. For example, here on my website, you can see uh, it's very seamless because I, I removed the shadow because you can see there's a shadow here by default underneath the nav. If you want to make like a seamless layout like this, you can uh, remove the shadow and I'll show that in the future. Um, and using some JavaScript detection techniques, uh, you should be able to make it so that when you um, start scrolling, as you can see, I added the shadow back into the nav. And again, this is partially using the nav bar that is um, native to materialize, I believe. Um, Although I did make this site right when I um, finished learning uh, Flexbox a couple months back. So actually this might have been a full Flexbox navbar. But as you can see, it definitely drew inspiration from kind of the materialized, the materialized setup that we have here. Like especially this little animation between the tabs, I added that little thing um, myself using CSS animation, which I also have a tutorial series for here on my channel. Anyways, enough with the plugs. Um, Basically, yeah, that's you can add the navbar fixed class to keep the navbar with you no matter where you are on the website, which is pretty cool. Um, and then, so yeah, that was pretty much all of the little nav bits that I had to show in this video. Um, in the next video, I will be going over kind of additional nav functionality, including a side nav, which is that little hamburger menu that shows up when you get small enough. In fact, yeah, just a quick uh, little show. This is amazing. I love this feature, the side nav because that I am using from straight from Materialize, uh, and this is unrealistic. This screen size will never exist. That's why it kind of breaks. But as you can see here, this little side nav is a Materialize side nav uh, that is kind of native to the way Materialize does it. So, you know, that's very useful on my site, and I will be going over how to do that in the next video. So if you want to see more videos like this uh, on Materialize and everything it has to offer, I highly recommend you check out the playlist, which is linked in the description where I'm uploading daily. If you enjoyed the video, please consider giving it a thumbs up, subscribe and hit the bell icon for notifications whenever I post new videos. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.